Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday afternoon chat. And you can tell that probably Jimmy's still on the road. You're right, Jimmy is still on the road. Uh, it's been a great week. We've been on the road all week. We've had just a fantastic time. And uh, But there's an old saying that kind of goes around our office that if it's Saturday, Jimmy's working somewhere. And that's pretty much true, and not necessarily all year round, but certainly the first five or six months of the year, Jimmy's working if it's Saturday. We have a, uh, 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 we just have a busy schedule. There's not, this is a big country when you think about it, and there's not very many people that do what we do for a living. So when you take this, this big a country, and, and uh, we speak at a lot of churches, God has blessed us and given us the, the great honor and opportunity to to speak about him in so many churches around the country. We've been at little churches, medium sized, some of the largest churches in the country. Uh, I, I, you know, talk about uh, over in Memphis, in Memphis uh, uh, big giant church over there, Second Baptist down in Houston, uh, just big giant churches in Atlanta. And yet we speak at churches all over the country and we were just at Carnegie, Oklahoma, a little Carnegie, Oklahoma. And, and pack the church full, completely church full. A great event over there last week. And, and, uh, but we are over here in Freeport, Illinois, uh, Freeport, Illinois at the, uh, Park Hill, not Park Hill, Oklahoma, where my, my family lives, but Park Hill Evangelical Church here in Freeport. And, uh, it's, uh, it's a great church, uh, great people here and, uh, incredible, incredible event, you know, a sold out event, which is just fantastic, actually allowing people to come in. Uh, after the dinner and and uh, and be there just just for the speaking part of it so tremendous tremendous event and i just want to personally thank everybody that that comes to these churches as we travel to all around the country and thank you when you show up anywhere you know this past uh weekend we were at the uh, major league fishing tournament the mlf uh red crest i believe they call it it's their MLF, mlf classic uh, much like the Bassmaster classic where you qualify for that final event and uh, Brian Thrift won that. My buddy Brian Thrift won it, won $300,000. And Brian's just had an incredibly great tournament career, one of the better fishermen of all time, without any doubt about that. Uh, we was there for Saturday and Sunday. Roland Martin was there, Kevin Van Dam, just about all the top-name fishermen were there, either fishing the tournament or working. A lot of them were there working, like Roland and I. We didn't fish the tournament. But uh, but, but we had a great time. And uh, so this past week, I actually got to fish three days, but I was also at the Bass Pro Shop store for a couple of days down in Grapevine, Texas. That's right, that great store in Grapevine that's out by the airport, right across from a church that a good friend of mine, Ed Young Jr., pastors, a fellowship church there out there in Grapevine. And they've got just, he's got just a tremendous ministry going down there, several campuses, and I think they do three services on Sunday. Uh, in two different locations. So he just really does an outstanding job. We was at that bath fruit shop the last couple of days, uh, in there for three hours a day. The first day on Thursday, we signed for uh, almost the entire total three hours before the line ended. Uh, on Friday, from 10 o'clock to one o'clock, the line never ended. We actually went from 10 o'clock until two o'clock uh, and signed for four hours. Visited with so many people. And I know a lot of y'all talked about Chris. A lot of y'all talked about the fact you've been praying for Chris and you love the deer and all the things we're doing on that. And, and uh, so many people, you know, getting a few fishing tips, fishing just is right now is happening big time. And uh, I just want to thank all of y'all personally that came out to visit with me at Grapevine. All of you that came out for the Major League Fishing uh, Championship. Uh, that's uh, Saturday and Sunday when we were there and visited with us there. It really, really means a lot when y'all come up and say something kind to us. Got a lot of hugs, uh, both boys and girls. <laughs> Both guys and girls gave me some hugs, but uh, we just had a had an incredible had an incredible time at that major league fishing tournament. An incredible time down at the Bass Pro Store. That's a really great store. They have three stores in that Dallas area. They have the Bass Pro over at Garland, and of course the Cabela store out by the racetrack. And uh, they're all great stores. I actually emceed the openings for all three stores, and and I love them all. It's been a long time since I've been in that that Grapevine store, uh, and I bought one of my safes, one of my gun safes in there, as a matter of fact. But uh, but anyway, it was great to be there. I got to have dinner with Nolan Spangler, a friend of mine. That's a big muskie guide up in uh, up in uh, Minnesota. We got scheduled to go up there and muskie fish with him. I think on July 16 and 17. And uh, my buddy Larry Walker, that I've known for many 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 years, Larry is doing his best to fish about every place there's water anywhere in the world. And we'll be going down to Argentina with him in April. 
fishing for the Golden Dorado and then spending a couple of days dove shooting. So, so I got to have dinner at uh, at the Hard Eight, which is an incredible barbecue place down in, in that Grapevine area. And uh, we got to have dinner down there with Larry and with Nolan. So I had a great evening there the the Thursday night. Worked on Friday and then came home and then uh, Saturday headed to the airport and and, and flew to uh, flew to uh, Chicago and then drove to Freeport. Snowing up here, snowing. I guarantee you, it's just crazy. But uh, but so I want to thank everybody that came to those events. Uh, whether it was the Bassmaster or the FLW uh, Major League Fishing Championship or the Bass Pro Shore. Uh, or, or the, the churches we've been to, where, wherever. I just thank everybody. It means so much to me when so many people show up. It's just it's so humbling, and it just mean, means an awful lot to me. Um, so uh, anyway, that was this past week. We've got a great week planned this next week. Uh, we will uh, actually not be not be going back to the ranch immediately. Uh, be going up to Expressway uh, Ram and uh, Expressway Chevrolet and Expressway Automall up in Mount Vernon, Indiana and Evansville, Indiana. I'll be picking up my new Ram truck. We'll be swapping my red one in for a black one. I'm excited and anxious to get about that and do, do that. We'll be doing a, a few television and uh, internet commercials for Expressway up there. Expressway has 17 different brands. I drive a Ram truck, but I've even rented a Ram truck uh, in Chicago to, to drive to Freeport, Illinois and back. Uh, so I got a Ram Laramie I'm driving up here. So that, 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 that it's something I'm really familiar with, everything inside of the truck, because I've been driving that Ram truck now for years. But uh, be up there shooting some stuff, so that's going to take up part of the week. And uh, uh, toward the end of the week, we'll again be going to the Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville, Tennessee. That's this coming Saturday, Saturday that's the next Saturday and Sunday, next Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I think, so three days of the actual tournament. But I'll be there on both Saturday and Sunday. Now, I'll be in a lot of different booths. I got, you know, like I can tell you, <clears throat> I'm going to be in a Bass Tracker, Bass Tracker, Bass Pro Tracker Ranger booth at that FLW, uh, MLF ch Championship. Uh, at the Bassmaster Classic, I will be in seven different booths uh, both days. And I'll only be in a booth for 50 or 55 minutes each. She's five minutes to go to the other ones. I don't know if I can remember them all, but I will be in the Bass Pro Tracker Ranger booth. I'll be in Garmin. I'll be in uh, Minn Kota. I'll be in Power Pole. I'll be in Lucky Strike. And... Uh, and I'm sure there's there's two more that I just I just can't remember right now, <laughs> but they may come to me before this thing's over. But uh, but anyway, I'll be in all those booths. So if you're going to the Bassmaster Classic next Saturday or Sunday, uh, really just about everybody will be there. I'm sure Roland will be there, Bill Dance will be there, Kevin Van Dam, Ricky Clun, Hank Parker. I know Hank Parker is going to be there. Uh, he uh, Hank Parker I think is going to celebrate his 70th birthday there. Hank Parker. Is, I know you can't tell it by looking, and it comes as a really big surprise to you, but Hank Parker is actually younger than me. Isn't that amazing? Hank Parker is younger than me, but he will be celebrating his 70th birthday there at the Bassmaster Classic. So if you see him there at the Classic, which I'm sure a lot of you will, be sure to tell Hank happy birthday because he's made it a long, long time. He lived a pretty reckless life in his younger years, but he's turned into being a fine, fine Christian man and a great father and grandfather and he just he's just a good man, great friend, <coughs> a tremendous person, great fisherman, great fisherman. Not quite as bad as some other good as some other people I know, but a great fisherman. Now Hank Hank is as good as there ever been. There's no doubt about that. But uh, but Hank Parker will be there. Uh, basically, everybody that's in anything in fishing will be at the Bassmaster Classic. That's in Knoxville, Tennessee, and that's uh, be next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That show, Big Bassmaster Classic show, is worth the price of admission, which is free, I believe. <laughs> And, uh, but, but I'll be there and be going from booth to booth. So if you'll just kind of, some of the booths will have posted the hours I'll be in their booths. So if you'll look at some of those booths I mentioned and the couple that I evidently can't remember who they are. Uh, but if you'll, uh, if you'll look in those, uh, if you look at some of those booths, they may have a placard or a sign up there telling what time I'll be in their booth for that particular 50 or 55 minute autograph session. Then we go going to the next booth. So, uh, but I'll be there all day, all day on both Saturday and Sunday. So you should be able to, to run into us there somewhere, come and say hi and, uh, and give me a hug if you're a pretty girl. Uh, or <laughs> no, I'm just talking guys. Don't worry about that too much. But anyway, that, that's going to be, that's going to be absolutely great. I did want to talk to you a little bit before, before I get off of here, but I don't really have a whole lot of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, we, uh, we, we were going to have, we're going to have a hard time this week getting some of the deer videos out. <coughs> 
We might go back and show you some of the babies being born from last year, kind of get you ready for that, because that's going to happen pretty soon. I'm not sure exactly what Pat, Pat has planned, but uh, I'm just simply not going to be able to shoot those videos because we've got just such a crowded, crowded week. But uh, this past week, we did get to fish. I went out Monday evening, fished by myself, and I only caught about, I can't remember, eight fish or something like that. And uh, But then, uh, then we did, did fish. Uh, no, we caught more now because yeah, that's right. My, my buddy Dennis got down there Monday evening. And I think I can't remember what we caught 20 or so, but, uh, we didn't catch too many. We got out there and fished last two, three hours before dark, but we caught a lot of fish on Monday, on Tuesday and a lot of fish on Wednesday. We had two boats out there and we just really, really caught a fish. And here's the deal. I just want to talk to you about it because it's really, really important. Now the week before when I was fishing, the water temperature got up to 57, 58, 59 degrees. No 60s, but 58, 59. 58 remembers the magic temperature. So that water had got up to there and the fish, a lot of them had got shallow and we smashed them up shallow the week before. Not this past week, but the week before. I mean, just caught them and caught them and caught them. We went out there Monday evening and had a hard time catching fish. And then Tuesday for most of the day, we had a hard time catching fish because the water temperature had dropped down to 53 and 54 degrees. That's right, that's right, it dropped. This time of the year it normally goes up, but we've had these cold nights, we had this cold front sort of come in here and dug in. Here is the critical deal to think about, and this is what I want you to remember if you're gonna go fishing. You need for the nights to be warmer than the water temperature. When the water temperature is higher uh, when the water temperature is lower than what the nights get to, say the water temperature is, let's just say, 55 degrees, and the night gets down to 50 or 40 or 30, water's going to get colder during the night. It's going to get a little colder even if it's about the same because you're taking the sunshine off of it. So you need, and I've sort of always all my life used a, a deal of 60 degree, 60 degree temperatures. When you start having 60 degree temperatures at night, that's when the fishing really gets good. And, uh, and we're going to start having those here pretty soon, but right now it's getting down to the 30s at night. So that water temperature is getting colder. So here's what you need to think about. You need to think about this. And there are males in most of the places in the south already building beds up on the bank. You can catch those male fish around on that bank better in the afternoon than you can in the morning. You catch the females that are out in front of them better in the afternoon than you can in the morning. You really want to fish on bright, sunshiny days. You want to fish north shore lines, sunshine that get a, the lines that get a lot of a lot of a sunshine on them. It gets the south wind blowing the warmer water over there. That warm, well, the water's warmer on top than it is anywhere else. So it blows that warm surface water on that north shore line. So those are some of the kind of places you want to look for. And you you really need to probably fish a little bit deeper in the first half of the day, and then start fishing shallower, shallower, shallower later in the day. Now this may this may be different areas of shallow, depending on what kind of lake you're fishing. Shallow might be fishing six feet, shallow might be fishing six inches or anywhere in between those areas. So, but, uh, but, but fish a little bit deeper in the morning and then fish shallower as the day goes on from midday on until the last hour or two before dark. And unless the water temperature is warmed up dramatically during the day, that last hour or two, you're probably gonna need to move back over and fish a little bit deeper uh, because as that, air begins to cool off and you'll feel it yourself in the boat fishing even though you might have had a nice beautiful day you'll feel that air begin to cool off as that sun gets down and it's not shining on the water so directly and then of course the dip finally below the horizon and you have sunset we've got longer days now uh, we're having a longer day every day and of course the time move we got basically an hour more daylight toward the end of the day it's really not but where it used to be seven o'clock now it's eight o'clock so but as that's cooling down you need to start moving deeper down again so Here's the deal, you want to start it down a little bit deeper and then move as you get to the middle of the day and the, and the afternoon when the sun's given a chance to warm things up. And you either want banks that for the wind, if you have a really nice day, banks where the wind's blowing the warm water in or coves and pockets and bays that are protected so the sun is shining on them and they're not having any kind of disturbance at all. The water's not moving. So the water, as it warms up, it starts getting water warmer a little bit deeper. Same thing happens as it blows, the wind blows in. So think about those kind of things right there. That's the kind of places you want to look for the fish, and that's kind of the way you want to fish for them. We caught an awful lot of fish in the middle of the day when the water got the warmest on a red man spinnerbait, buzzing it right on top of the water. Now, I'm not talking about fishing a foot deep or six inches deep. 
talking about fishing it right on top of the water, leaving a wake. And if you did not do that, you, pro you couldn't catch a fish. Remember, the closer you have your blade to the top of the water, the more vibration you're gonna create. So that's, that's exactly what you wanna do. As the day goes on, you can drop down and fish a little bit deeper. Uh, didn't catch hardly anything this week on a crankbait, threw it a little bit, didn't catch much on it at all. Did catch some on uh, some vibrating jigs, not quite as well as we caught them on the spinnerbait. And like I said, as we went down and then that late afternoon after them fish had been up and moved down a little bit, caught them on a plastic worm. That's right, caught them on a plastic worm. And let me give you a good color to throw this time of the year when the bass are getting ready to go on the bed. Strawberry. Yeah, that's what Tom Mann would say, strawberry. He wouldn't say red, he would say strawberry. That's right, a bright red plastic worm. It just about fish, outfish any color. If you're fishing some uh, craws or stuff like that on a jig, use something where you put some red on a pincher, take your dip and die, your spike it dip and die, dip your pinchers in red or orange, and uh, that's gonna help you too. So, uh, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The fishing's going to just get better every single day. We're going to have the times when these cold fronts are going to keep coming in, last a day or two. This one that we've got in here now is lasting a pretty good ways, a pretty good ways. It's a, it's a long, hard, bad cold front. We'd had this thing a couple months ago. We'd all froze to death probably. <laughs> but they're going to, they're going to, they're going to end here pretty soon. We got a lot of pretty, a lot of 70 degree weather coming in the south, 80 degree weather coming in the south before you know it. We'll be out there fishing and cut off without a shirt and working on our suntan. And then we'll be seeing the 100 degree day. So enjoy springtime. Enjoy springtime. Go as often as you can. As my buddy Richard Jean, the fishing machine would say, cause it's good for you. That's right, fishing is good for you. There's no doubt about it. Go as often as you possibly can. And guys and girls, go out there and make this week a great one. You know, there are so many things going on in the world that could discourage us, could put us in a bad mood. There's so many things going on in this country. We have politicians that could not care less about whether you and I breathe tomorrow or not. Uh, don't worry about that. You have a God that loves you. You have a God that does care. And go out there and just make every day a great one. If you just smile at people, if you just let the bad words, the dirty words, the bad things, and a lot of people complained about me this last week on social media because I gave... Uh, Apache a mule rather than giving him a truck, you know, so uh, we've been working on another surprise by the way for Apache over the last several weeks and we've just about got that surprise to come to fruition and I think that Apache's going to like that also and we may share that with you, we may not uh, because it seemed like I share a surprise with him and half of you, well not half of you, probably 10% of you uh, found some negative in it and uh, here's another thing, let me say right here about <laughs> that, that you can take a bad day and make it a good one just by your attitude, by the words you speak, by the way you smile. You can do that. But here's another thing. You can take almost any situation that you encounter and make a negative out of it. Make a negative out of it. However, it works both ways. You can take about every situation that you encounter and make a positive out of it. The old deal about a glass of water and water goes up halfway. Is that water, is that, is that glass of water half empty or half full? The negative person says it's half empty. The positive person says it's half full. The really, really person that's living his right life says, thank you, Lord, I've got a glass of water. I've got a glass of water. And it, whether it's even a, a third of the way full, I've got a glass of water. Thank you for this water. So try to put the positive in everything you do. Don't look for the negative. Don't try to pick out a way to say something bad to or about somebody. And I'm telling you, not only will your life change for the better, people around you will start liking you better. And you will start liking them better as well because they'll start treating you better. And when people treat you better, you like it better, no doubt about it. You know, I was listening to something on the radio coming up here and a guy was, was talking about a, a, a Bible verse. And he said, some people call that the golden rule. And it's simply do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Real simple. If you want people to be nice to, to you, you just be nice to them. They can't hardly help themselves. They got to be nice back. So look for the positive in everything you do out there. When a negative thought or negative word comes into your mind, zip it up. Don't talk about it. Don't say it. If you want to say something bad about somebody or to somebody, tell them to do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not. Guys and girls, have you a great one out there this week. 
And remember, I sure do love you.